In this chapter, let's dig down just a little bit deeper into the rabbit hole, see how far it goes. And the very first thing that we are going to do is we are going to get rid of that desktop image. Now think about it this way. That's distracting. Beautiful image, don't get me wrong. But it's distracting. Most studies show, and I guess this doesn't apply to everybody, but most studies do show something. They show that things like this distract from the workflow. So the first thing I want to do is change it. The other reason is, after hours and hours of teaching you guys this stuff, I don't think you want to look at that for a couple of hours. So let's do this. My doc is open. I have some things on here you won't have, but you will have this. And that is System Preferences. Open it. Click it. Just one time. There they are. We're going to look at Desktop and Screen Saver and Doc in this lesson. Let's start with Desktop and Screen Saver. And here we are. We are in Desktop Pictures. Now, if you do choose them, you have different ones here, nature, plants, art, you know, whatever you want to use. You can also come down here and click the plus sign and choose your own folder that has images in it. If you choose them, you can say, okay, I want to change the picture every X number of minutes. Or I tell you what, every day I log on, I want a different photograph. Up to you. So we're going to turn that off. And I'm going to show you exactly how boring I am. Incidentally, you can have them random orders, and you can have a translucent menu bar so the image kind of shows through. But I'm going to go down to solid colors and be boring by choosing something like that. Now that's going to be a lot easier for us to work with, but it's so much easier to see things too. Easier to read this stuff. Most museums that do art show them against earth tones because it helps really emphasize the colors. If you do a lot of art type work like I do, Photoshop, Illustrator, whatever, it's easier seeing the colors in your artwork if you have a non-script background. So that's why we're going to use it. Now you can also choose here for custom color if you want to change the color to something else. So we got our desktop set up the way we want it for our lessons. Kind of boring, but it'll work. Go in Screen Saver. Now when you get into the Screen Saver area, it's actually kind of fun to work here. I don't mind a Screen Saver being photographs because that means I'm not working. You know, I haven't moved my mouse according to this for 30 minutes and it opens up the screen saver. Screen savers had a much more important purpose years ago. When monitors actually would burn images into them if you didn't turn them off, that's not really true anymore. They're more for entertainment, and you do have a lot of ways you can use them. Here's an origami, if you want to do something like that. You can change the images, or choose your very own folder with images in it. You can change how you do it up here. You even have one called Holiday Mobile. Hmm. There we go get into the spirit of the holidays. Reflections, whatever. Now if you want to try any one of them, just simply come over here and click Preview. And well, there you go, Reflections. Move your mouse if you want to bring it back. Now you can also, if you want to activate it, choose Hot Corners down here. Now you can see my upper left hand corner starts and my lower left corner disables. Now there are times, occasionally, I'll get a client in and we're talking and I'm working on a program that isn't out to the public yet so I can't show it to anybody. So I'll just very casually go up into the corner, start a screensaver, we can have our conversation and I'm not violating my non-disclosure agreement. Anything you want to do here, controlling it, photographs, whatever, screensavers are okay because I'm not working on the computer at that time. Let me go ahead and get out of here. Incidentally, you can also show it with a clock if you want to. Let's go show all. Let's go into doc. Now the dock, of course, is, well, this down here. Now you can choose a size for the icons to make them larger or smaller. I use this one, I like this one, it's called magnification. And I've got it on max. What that does is it magnifies the ones you go over. And to me, I like that. It's easy to see. Down here you can position on screen. Now I work with multiple monitors. So basically if I go left, you're not going to see it. It's going to be on my left monitor. But if I go right, this is my right monitor. And there it is over here if you want to use it this way. It's kind of weird, but I use it at the bottom. I'm kind of traditional. You have something called a genie effect. Now, what's that? Well, basically, it's how a program opens up. If I come down here and say, open up, oh, Microsoft Word. That's an older version of Microsoft Word. If I minimize it, watch what happens. So you're kind of like sucking it into a bottle, the genie effect. If you use the other one, let me go ahead and reopen. That's right here. You can see it right there. Let me go ahead and use the shortcut Command Q to quit Microsoft Word. 
you can use the scale one and it just gets smaller and then bigger. That's the difference up to you. It doesn't really impact anything except how you see things collapse. You have a double click on the Windows title bar to minimize it. So instead of clicking that little button that I clicked up here, you could actually double click anywhere in the title bar. Minimize Windows into application icon is one I don't use. Let me show it to you though. Let me click here. Let me reopen Microsoft Word. Now when I minimize, and I'll click right here, watch what happens. Well, it minimized it into the Microsoft Word icon. I don't like that. I like to see it separate, but that's just me. If I click it, it'll bring it back. Okay, let me quit again. Down here, animate opening applications. I like that one too, because when you click on an icon, it'll bounce, meaning I'm starting this one. I think that's kind of cute. If you're bored, you can see how many you can get to bounce. Let me go ahead and quit one more time on that one. Automatically hide and show the dock. I like that one too. And show indicator lights for an open application. Now, I like that one. If I turn this on again, you can see down here, if I open up, say, Word again, I'll just keep using that one. See the little lights that come on right there? I have iTunes on here too, and it is open on my other monitor. And here is the program I'm using actually to record my video. And you can see those little lights underneath them. So I like that one too because it tells me what's on and what isn't on. One more time, let me quit right here. So I like this one. I like this one and this one. I don't use minimize windows into application icons. So let me turn that one off. And I do like automatically hide and show the dock too. So it'll come up when you need it and it goes away when you don't need it. So controlling the dock and controlling our desktop and screensavers is just the beginning of getting an operating system to work for you. And again, most studies show if you feel comfortable working with your operating system, you're going to be better at what you do. Let's go ahead and close out here. We can do it right there. And there you go. We have a nice, beautiful, gray, boring screen to work on from this point forward.